Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having an incredible day or night in Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be going over some terms today, studying the history of the Christian church. We're using as our textbook Marvin M. Arnold's Apostolic History Outline. Unbelievable book. Done a review on it probably separately and together with his other books. I can't remember. We've done like over 6,000 of these things. So I get, sometimes I forget. And sometimes I think they like disappear. I don't know off YouTube. I, like I can't find them. I'm like, where did they go? So let's get started. Marvin Arnold, absolutely amazing historian. And so we're going to go over a glossary he has here. You have to remember he was doing all this in pre-internet days. This originally came out in 1985. You can still get this. Just Google it online. I think he used to could get like everything he's got for like $65. Well worth it. What a preeminent mind. Now, sometimes there's some things he may say they were apostolics, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. There's so much. The overwhelming uh, amount of it is just fantastic, and it's just great. So... Um, just what an amazing person he was, an, an incredible man of God. Of course, my bishop, Paul Booney, from Michigan as well. So, Indianapolis in Michigan. Okay, so here's some terms in the study of Christian history we're going to look at. Um, apostolic means apostle-like, what the apostles taught in Acts, the doctrine of the twelve. Now, a lot of people, like you start saying, well, Trinity, Triune, first person, second person, third person, co-equal, co-eternal, confounding the substance, you know, on and on. None of these terms, circumcision, are found in perichoresis in the Bible. And so they're like, well, oneness isn't either and apostolic isn't either. Well, okay, I'm totally fine just using biblical terminology. I'll just state that. And so I can explain biblical doctrine without using the term oneness or the oneness of God or something. So so I just wanted to say that about apostolic. I'll repeat that again. Apostle like what the apostles taught in Acts, the doctrine of the twelve. Albingenzines of Albi, France, they were mostly apostolic Christians and organizations called by this name, especially between AD 900 and 1490. Some called them Catharai, or the pure ones. Now, I will say, like if you go to Wikipedia, that has been totally whitewashed, total misrepresentation of who the Albingenses were. If you study the history of the day, study old church histories, you don't find any of that. And so you have to remember there's some extremely wealthy, influential uh, religious organizations that pay dozens of people to go and correct different things on the internet, interact with people on the internet. It's their full-time job. So just know that. Um, Anabaptist, anabaptism, this simply means to rebaptize someone. Apostolics would always rebaptize converts out of Rome's mode in the Acts 38 formula. Now, not all apostol uh, not, excuse me, not all Anabaptists were apostolics. Some were, some were not. Like Mino Simmons baptized Jesus' name, this type of thing. Arianism. Arias, Arians of AD 290 to 335. Arianism never died. Arius was excommunicated at Nicaea for denying the Trinity idea. Now, Arians, strangely enough, Jerome said Arians believed in three hypostasis, which was later the formula for the Trinity. That's the reason Jerome really didn't like that term, because he's like, that's an Arian term. Secondly, Constantine converted to Arianism, was baptized in Jesus' name as an Arian on his deathbed. When I say baptize, I'm talking about like pouring. It wasn't really immersion, like real biblical baptism. But to anybody's knowledge, I think he was poured over. Um, I mean, I say to anybody's knowledge, maybe somebody's got knowledge, he was dunked. But the dunkers, that was another group of ancient church history. Um, so anyhow, the Arians never died. These would be kind of, Socinians might would fall into that. And I'll tell you, just studying Socinianism and apostolic beliefs of the Godhead, there's some fine nuances 
But basically, Socinians, a lot of them baptized in Jesus' name, maybe most, George Hunston Williams' Radical Reformation, that they would uh, believe that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, but they would not necessarily believe Jesus was God. And I think it hinges a lot on 1 Corinthians 6.17, He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. And so they would see more Jesus the man Christ Jesus as a vessel carrying the fullness of God. I've talked to a lot of Socinians when I live, I'm from Morrow, Georgia, and one of their colleges moved in Morrow. So I had a lot of interactions with them, talked to them, went to their campus multiple times. And uh, it was very difficult seeing exactly, but at the end of the day, they don't believe in the deity of Jesus, which obviously I strongly do. Now, some may, the Church of God General Conference, there's several churches of gods out there. There's Church of God General Conference. They may have changed. This was 20 years ago. Um, uh, Atomites, now I think he means there is some misspellings in this. It may have gone over, this is like the 6th edition, 1991 edition. Artemanites, followers of Artemon, he was a monarchian with Acts 2 doctrine in Septimus Severus time. So you will find his name in church history, the study of church history. So we're just kind of defining the terms auto defa, uh, an act of faith. But that was when they burned non Catholics at the stake. So Jews were burned, other Christians, broad sense of that term, were burned, on and on. There were at least 2,000 auto defas in Spain alone. I've read, I'm not, I haven't done a deep dive into this, this reason bullfighting came in when they stopped the auto defaws, they still wanted kind of some bloodlust. But I always say, who, you know, people say, that's so barbaric. I'm like, and you're watching MMA, UFC, and all this. That's like, yeah. So the Catheri, Cather or Catheri meant pure. This was a general term. Most were apostolics in many different organizations. Donatists were slandered as Catheri by Rome's religious institution. We'll get to what Donatists are, I think, yeah. Um, but it really doesn't go into it. But Donatists, they basically um, were very strict on when people had denied the faith or something coming back in kind of like novations in that sense um so catholicism the whole catholic system the total concept it's falsely referred to itself as christianity means universal is what it means and so all of what we call the church fathers these were all selected writings that were preserved that had some aspect leading to the bishop of rome being in primacy and all of this not all of them agreed obviously in the first 200 years you know till 200 a.d there was really almost no trinitarian concept among them that was found among the gnostics believe it or not valentinus and the three natures 149 a.d so that's what Catholicism is. Catholic hierarchy, the top Romish leaders, the Episcopi, Episcoporum. So that's Catholic hierarchy, cardinals later and all this. Coercionism, and so much of Catholic literature you can find in pre-Christian Rome, like pontiff and various terms like this. Uh, coercionism, the use of verbal or military force which nobody should do that. Everybody should have free will to choose on their own. There should be no killing for the faith. That old Voltaire saying, you know, you have one religion, you have a dictatorship or something, a tyrant, two religions, you have civil war. When you have a hundred religions, you have peace. And that's really true in a lot of ways. Catholic hierarchy, we've gone through that court. So concordant, an agreement between a pope and a sovereign or government, however, we refer specifically to the one drawn up July 20th, 1933, between Eugenio Pacelli, Pope Pius XII, in Nazi Germany's Adolf Hitler, and Article 16 signed the Catholic system in Germany over to Hitler. And this would be Bonhoeffer fighting against this, even though he was Catholic per se. But also, like Hitler's Pope, Marvin Arnold's on all this stuff before these famous New York Times bestseller lists. So I just thought that's great. Uh, conductual averageism. 
this is a fantastic term to know and i credit marvin arnold with teaching me this term it means the average morality in our average center on the street conduct of unregenerates a low standard of holiness and so this is something for hol um, holiness all real oneness pentecostals apostolics or holiness that conductual averageism we don't just sit there and say well we're just like hollywood we're just like the person on the street you have to be like the world to reach the world or we're a little better than we get our our holiness informed by the word of god not by the world i'll do one more and that's confiscation i use this word herein to denote the scheme or practice of the catholic system during inquisitions as it stole or seized non-catholic properties catholic history Hitler stripped the Jews, as example, Catholics stripped the Waldensians. But even before that, like during the Justinian Code, even going back to Constantine and then Pope Damasus and all this, saying, you know, the Nicene Creed, anybody that's not Nicene Christian, you got to give up your churches and uh, be killed in many instances. Boy, in Turkey, there was a lot of bloodshed because you had churches, as I've done on many of our archeological shows and Biblical Archeology span Day podcast, Steve Waldron, that there were underground churches in Turkey that would have up to 70,000 people, that they were primarily apostolic. God bless, see you later. I'm glad the truth has always been, bye-bye.